With Picard Day happening yesterday, what better day to drop a brand new full-length trailer for Season 2 of Star Trek Picard? What the hell is happening here? Excellent question, Jean-Luc. Oh dear, you're a bit older than I imagined. Mon Capitaine, how I've missed you. Q. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack and let's get right into it. We may only have gotten a small tease of what is to come for Season 2 of Star Trek Picard back on First Contact Day, but now the stars have aligned to give us a trailer. What secrets may be hidden inside which tells us what new adventure we can expect from Picard and his crew. What will they embark on? Let's take a look. Now if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. Okay, let's make it so. Just how Picard started, we start this trailer with Picard at his chateau, calling for Laris, one of his Romulan housekeepers, and already Picard feels like something is wrong in a sense. Now the outfit Picard has is very cool, a black coat with patterned soldiers, but the most fascinating thing about the outfit is Picard is wearing a Delta Com badge. However, it's not the same style of the 2399 Com badge, but a new one, which is a simple delta with a bevel top edge and bars on the interior of the delta, possibly denoting a rank. Picard surely hasn't re-entered Starfleet, but what might this mean? We'll return to his combat later in the video. We found out during the last Picard tease that John Delancey was returning as a nefarious trickster of Q, adversary to our cabin town. Q even mocks the old age Picard saying, you're a bit older than I imagined, but in turn appears to Picard as an older looking Q. Many fans, including us, wondered how they were going to do with Q, with John Delancey obviously having aged since the next generation. But it was always going to be this considering the godlike powers of Q, he could age himself when he wanted essentially. Just as Picard is wearing an all black coat, casual outfit, so is Q, in a stylish coat and an interesting looking brooch. The brooch probably hints at something, but at the moment your guess is as good as ours. Q says, Mon Capitan, how I've missed you, which lets us know Picard probably hasn't been visited by Q since the end of the Next Generation episode with All Good Things. I wonder why. Now, we get this amazing scene at Starfleet Command, with a meeting being presided over by Admiral Picard still in Starfleet. In the meeting hall are the flags of the Klingon Empire, the Tellarites, the United Federation of Planets, Starfleet, Starfleet Academy, the Vulcan, Bajor, and finally the Ferengi Alliance. An interesting setup I'd say. Now, it's very interesting that Ferengi Alliance and Bajor have a flag here, which possibly could denote that they've either joined the Federation or that their presence is required during this meeting, possibly as an ally to the Federation itself. Seated next to Picard are other Starfleet officers, including Raphael Musica, played by Michelle Hurd. The uniform that Picard is wearing is very interesting, it's very much in the style of a 2385 uniform Picard wore in the flashbacks during Season 1 of the series. It's slightly different due to the open flap on its right side. The star not only matches that of the Monster Maroon uniforms of the 2S movies, but interestingly enough, the alternate future uniform seen in episodes of The Next Generation, Voyager and Deep Space Nine. However, it could also be a dress uniform variant of the 2385 uniform. Possibly when Picard is giving his speech to Starfleet about the Romulan relocation effort. Even though this does have elements of the 2385 uniform, it does feature a 2399 com badge, instead of a one used at the time, so this could be an alternate timeline and not a flashback to Picard's later years in Starfleet. It remains to be seen. While this is being shown, Q is saying, welcome my friend, to the very end of the road not taken. This makes me think that we'll be looking at an alternate timelines in Season 2 of Picard, similar to the TNG episode Tapestry. What if I did this event differently, and then Q is showing him what the decision would have led to? We see Raffi and Elnor walking away from something in a very seedy location, with both of their hairs down. If Elmo is there, this could be a place he might have ended up if Picard did not help relocate him to Vashti to live with the Quat Malat nuns. All very fascinating to see what might have been if a single action was different. We finally get to see our favourite Roman housekeeper and former spy, Laris. It's great to see that she'll be back for Season 2, because she made a very big impression during her time in Season 1. However, she is seen with longer hair than we have seen her with, and it looks like she's a little younger than she was in Season 1. Perhaps this scene takes place in the 2380s, when she and Zyobana first arrived at Chateau Picard. We get a small glimpse of what might have been the real world Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. We knew from some set leaks that they have been filming at this location recently. 
what we might see is very interesting. We won't talk about the cell leaks here, but we did talk about them in a recent video, so do check them out if you're interested, and of course, you can follow on social media as well. Now, Soji is seen in a very stylish outfit, next to a water feature and wearing not only a fractal neuronic cloning symbol pin, as a mouthful, with fractal cloning being a process which created her and Daj from a neuron of Lieutenant Commander Data, but a pin of what looks to be the Federation logo. If we are continuing the theme of an alternate timelines, what would Daj and Soji be like if it wasn't a ban on cloning during their creation, and they were allowed to be in the Federation as themselves? Maybe this is what we're seeing. A female voice then says, time has been broken, and we get a glimpse of Dr. Gerati. Who this female voice is, we don't know, but some people believe it could be Admiral Clancy, Starfleet CNC we saw in Season 1. This does pose an interesting storyline for Season 2, and I am excited to see it. Crystal Rios is seen in the La Serena, but it now looks to be a Starfleet ship. Its chair has a Delta logo on it, and we also seen wearing black and a strange looking Delta combat, similar to Picard in the first scene. Could we be seeing a different type of Starfleet in this alternate timeline? A timeline where Starfleet recruits independent operators, like Rios and the La Serena. Rios' combat only has one horizontal stripe on it, possibly denoting him to the rank of Ensign. Who knows, but it seems like Rios is shocked, so maybe he appears in the timeline during the scene, and this is his first introduction to this new old timeline. The guardman says, we can save the future, and I'll get us all home. It does appear that our crew is stuck in one or multiple different timelines, or alternate timelines, and somehow they have to find their way back home. This could pose a very interesting format for a serialized show like Picard, and could very much make each episode its own thing instead of just one part of ten, which is a complaint some people had about season one of the series. And our final scene, which has taken most of the fandom's attention, is Seven waking up in a nice house, with a strange looking comm badge, which kind of looks more totalarian than that of a Starfleet comm badge. The symbol has actually been seen before in the aforementioned set leaks at the Disney console hall, with a symbol adoring flags. Could we be looking at what the Federation might have become if choices were different? Not entirely like the Mirror Universe, which is a complete separate universe, but just an alternate timeline, where Starfleet might have become more militaristic, like yesterday's Enterprise from the Next Generation, where Starfleet was embroiled in a war against the Klingon Empire, as such had become militaristic and not the exploration-based organisation we know and love. However, that is not the most interesting thing that Seven awakes to, as when she looks in the mirror, she realises that she does not have her Borg implants. This is probably a future where Seven was never assimilated by the Borg, where the Hansers never decided to go in search of a Borg as well. Some people have theorised that this could be in a future in which Q never sent the Enterprise to meet the Borg in the first place. But I have to remind them that the Hansers were sent in search of a Borg in 2353, which is a whole 12 years before the Enterprise D first encountered a Borg in 2365. Dates and lore, people. Some previous set leaks showed a Seven without her implants. We presume that she was hiding them through technology to not contaminate her timeline and stand out, and not being in place to her timeline which she was never assimilated. It's interesting. Seven can also be seen with a wedding ring in the scene, and who she might be married to yet is unknown, as she probably wouldn't have met any of the Voyager crew in this alternate timeline. Sorry, Jakote and Seven stands. It doesn't look like it's happening as much as we'd love Robert Beltran to come back, though he might be a bit old for Seven at this point. We don't know. Either way, could be interesting. Now, we did get a release date of 2022, and that this is a trailer for Picard Season 2, but we still have more to show you and break down. What also came out, and was said previously, was a post of a Season 2, which shows the Los Angeles skyline and its motorway making the shape of a delta. The interesting thing in the skyline, and the fact it is Los Angeles. The skyline is not the actual LA skyline, but a rendering of what the skyline might look like in the year of 2030. This is fascinating, as we haven't had much trek in this era before, apart from Deep Space Nine's Past and Tense and Carpenter Street from Enterprise. Now, Earth would have recovered from the eugenic wars of the 90s, and we were on course for nuclear annihilation in World War III. So we can probably guess that our crew may have to go back to the 2030s LA to change the timeline to make sure the future happens how it should. How this event may change the Federation, especially with it being before Zephyr Cochran's first contact with the Vulcans, is unknown. But who knows? Let's not forget, this isn't the first time Picard's gone back in time to make sure Earth's history stayed on course. I mean, Star Trek first contact, anyone? Los Angeles was previously seen in the Star Trek Voyager episode, Future's End, where the US's Voyager was sent back into 1996 LA, and had to stop a time ship from destroying the future. This time ship was stolen by Henry Starling of Chronoworks, who owned a skyscraper in LA, so I wonder if we might see a small cameo of this building if it's still up 30 years later. 
The skyline, however, is actually mirrored, so either they wanted to be looking from the opposite direction, or they're trying to be smart and are hinting at a possible mirror universe tease. But I doubt since Discovery has been heavy with a mirror universe, and if they are exploring alternate timelines, I don't see why they wouldn't to explore separate universes, so to say. Now that is all we have time for today. What did you think of this new Picard trailer? Do let us know down below in the comments section below as per usual. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from myself and the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. And don't forget to check out our website as well. For now, I have been Captain Jack here on Trek Central. Thank you for watching. I am excited for Star Trek Picard and I cannot wait to share more news with you very soon. Live long and prosper my friends. Goodbye.